Welcome to another episode of Share My World. How's everybody doing? I'm sorry you guys haven't seen me in a hot minute. I've been busy left, right, and sideways, obviously. But, um, hey, that's life of being a mother and a wife. Um, so, um, pretty much what's been going on is the simple fact that I've been um, trying to get my risk and everything together. And um, Unfortunately, I had to reschedule my appointments because the doctor who's supposed to be giving me my MRI results is not going to be in tomorrow. So not tomorrow, but next Friday, I will uh, definitely know what's going on with my wrist. So that's the update on that one. As far as um, with, uh, with me, that's pretty much what's been going on. Um, I think the last episode that I showed you guys, I'm sorry that it got cut off. I accidentally pressed the stop recording button and it stopped me in the middle of my ranting. And um, pretty much what I was saying in the video was pretty much all that I wanted to say. So thank God I did get to say a good amount of what I wanted to say and what needs to be said. Um, basically what I was saying is that, you know, me and my family are not rich. You know, we struggle just as much as anybody else. You know, we're, strugg we're about to struggle, you know, in the next couple of days you know or so but um all I can say is I'm just gonna leave it in God's hands and he provides a way he always does so I'm gonna try not to worry too much about it it's just the way it is that's just life for you it just depends on how you react to it is pretty much that goal there but um I'm gonna definitely just leave it in his hands like always um, yes, I have still been writing. Um, actually, for the past few days, you guys haven't heard from me. I've actually just been trying to take care of business. You know, school's starting back up next month, so there's there's that. Uh, my husband is still working, but um, apparently I'm not going to sit over here and wait to go back to my current job with simplicity. I'm going to see if I can try to find something else. Because as of right now, we're going to need the funds. And that's like having a little extra money in your pockets and make sure your children have everything they need and make sure we have everything we need. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to go ahead and uh, do that. And um, I'm still going to type up on my stories. You know, I'm still going to be the greatest writer of all times. So please believe me, that dream is never going to die. Um, but what I will say is um, this, and um, I actually saw this on... Um, uh, TV actually you kids don't know how good you have it today you just don't and the reason I'm saying that is because there was a celebrity on TV on a commercial talking to a host of a you know of a TV show so to speak and he said you know these kids don't know how good they have it you know they got these backpacks that um, have wheels on them and they can just pull their backpack you know with you know, a whole bunch of books or whatever. We didn't have that growing up, ladies and gentlemen. And you know what I'm talking about. We had the backpacks that you actually had to carry on your back. And when you had a shitload of books and notebooks and everything, when you carried it on your back, you damn near fucking broke your back. I remember those days. You know, but when I when I got a little older, when I um had to... When I had back surgery, I had my girl, Shine Your Best, um, carry my backpack along with her, so I felt really bad. But I had the actual backpack. I didn't have a backpack that had wheels on them. That didn't come until, like, later on. But these kids don't know how easy they have it anymore. I mean, seriously, it's ridiculous. You know, you got kids that, you know, I see kids with iPhones, and they're freaking, like, six, seven, eight, nine years old. I mean, what the hell job you got? You can afford an iPhone. You know, we didn't have those. The only phone we had was the one that was hanging on the wall or on the receiver on our dang on living room table. <laughs> That's the only phone that we've ever had. That was the only way you can get in touch with your parents was at home or at their job. But we never had a cell phone. I mean, wonderful invention. They came out with a cell phone. I'm not going to lie. It's a wonderful invention. I love having a cell phone. I mean, you can take it everywhere you go. I mean, there's other ways to get in touch with, you know, the family, everything. You know, it's not just the house phone anymore. I mean, I still have a house phone, but... You know, when you're out and about and when you're a busy parent, you pretty much have a cell phone. But I've seen people had two cell phones. What is it, one for business, one for personal pleasure, whatever you want to call it? Yeah. I'm not going to have two cell phones. One cell phone works for me because, heaven forbid, I forget the number to my second phone, then I'm really going to look stupid. But seriously, these 
kids just don't know how good they have it. I swear they don't. It's ridiculous. But, you know, and then you didn't, you know, with the, the whole the, the DVD players and, you know, whatnot. You know, we didn't have DVD players. We had VCRs. We had cassettes. We had the Walkman. People don't have Walkmans no more. They have MP3 players and shit. Everything is on the phone. If I show someone a Walkman right now, they'll look at me like, how in the hell did you manage? Trust when I tell you this. When I had a Walkman, I swear on my life, I thought I was probably like the baddest kid on the block when I had a Walkman. That Walkman pretty much got me through some tough times. Especially growing up in my family and my world. Yeah, I was thankful to have the Walkman. I mean, seriously, if somebody literally found a Walkman for me, I swear on my life I will cherish it. I will just put that in a secure box to make sure it doesn't get ruined. I loved my Walkman. I really did. I used to listen to Monica. I listened to Babyface. I listened to Immature. I listened to any artist that I can get my hands on with a cassette. So, yeah. But, um, thank you. Go sit down. Be quiet. Um, that was my daughter, Ivana, telling me about a vacuum cleaner that I left in their room. But um, I'll get to that later when I get off. So, um, you know, with that, that's uh, I, I really just wish I had a Walkman. I swear on my life I do. I cherish my childhood. I cherish all the lovely memories and everything that I've ever had in my childhood. Seriously. Except I never understood why I like the Care Bears. And now... I saw the Nostalgia Critic do um, uh, a movie review on um, uh, Care Bears. And looking at it now, I still don't understand what the hell did I like about the Care Bears. I was a little kid. I guess when you're a kid, you have a different mind, a different brain setting. And then as you get older, it's like your brain matures a little you know, more as you step into another phase of your life. Because when I was a teenager, I did not give a two shits about the Care Bears. And now that I'm an adult, it's like, okay, my little mind liked it anything that had fuzziness and cuteness and colorfulness and all that other good shit. Yeah, don't judge me. Whatever. So, um, yeah. <laughs> if my, my kids like Care Bears, so I leave it alone. They're, they're little kids. They can get away with it. doesn't matter. So, yeah. I cherish my childhood i actually still remember my address and my phone number i shit you not 11450 goddard court building six taylor michigan 4810 no 80 sorry 80 4810 and my phone number was 313-946-4814 of course i can remember that phone number because of all the fours you gotta say in the phone number was it like three fours <laughs> Yeah, if my cousins come across this video, they're going to really be like, how the hell, she still remember all that. Hey, man, when you have a wonderful childhood like I did, hey, you going to remember every bit by bit. I still remember how my mother spoiled the living crap out of me as a kid, how I had all my Christmas gifts underneath the tree, and I had my birthday gifts in the dining room table with my Wizard of Oz birthday cake. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, and um, I, I'm a Christmas baby. My birthday is December 25th. Yes, I was born on Christmas. And unfortunately, I am an adult now. I get ripped off. So normally when somebody gets me a gift, they try to say that that's my Christmas slash birthday gift. And I say, the hell it's not. That's, you got to pay one gift. Is this my Christmas gift? Fine, then that means you owe me a birthday gift. And if you got me a birthday gift, that means you owe me a Christmas gift. Bullshit. No one's not doing that to me anymore. Nobody obviously claims they don't have the funds to get me anything. I mean, honestly, people, I'm not expensive, okay? I'm not expecting, you know, Gucci. I'm not, you know, expecting Louis Vuitton. I'm not that kind of girl. You know, if you get me like, like this, for example, this is a wig. If you get me something like this, that's fine. If you got me nail polish, I'll love you for life. If you get me um, rings, necklaces, bracelets, I love those. I love those things. I don't like that, that fancy stuff because I'm not going to keep up with it for long. I mean, I might wear it like a couple of times and it's just going to be hanging up in my closet for decades to come and I'm going to sit here and forget about it even existed. So, no, I'm not, that kind, I'm not that kind of girl. I'm plain Jane as they come. Plain Jane as they come. That's just the way I am. Just can't help myself with that. But um, that's pretty much everything that's been... Um, happening with uh with me i've just been going through you know a lot um i'm having an issue with um 
someone and um, I'm kind of disappointed in that but um I'm at a point in my life right now where I'm not going to sit over here and bring myself down to that person's level. I mean, I've cried about it. I talked about it with my friends, and they pretty much told me the same thing as I've always been hearing. You can't control everyone. I mean, what's done is done. I mean, you have the choice to not speak to them for a minute if you don't feel you want to talk to them. You want to talk to them. And that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing. I am going through too much in my life right now, and I don't need to be stressed out about it. You know, I'm already stressed out about what the heck's going to happen next month and everything. And I'm trying to leave that in God's hands. And that's all I'm going to do is leave it in God's hands. You know, God provides a way. God doesn't put too much on you that you can possibly bear. And um, guess what? It is what it is. Like, um, I thought we were going to get shut off with um, a service that we have been being provided with for this time. And um, come to find out we did. And as a matter of fact, we got an increase on something. So I'm very happy about that. So that turned out really well. You know, I was panicky. But um, obviously I should not have worried about it because everything's all good now. So that turned out well. So if God can provide that goodness, then he's going to provide a goodness for this situation. So I'm just going to leave it in God's hands and just leave it at that. When you leave things in God's hands that you feel you really just don't know what to do, trust me, it works. There's no punchline to that. God is not a product that you'll take and then eventually it'll just wear off and it don't work anymore. No, God works all day, every day, 100% realness. There's no punchline to that. If you have a problem and you can't solve it, leave it in God's hands and trust me, he'll make a way. Because he, he's done it for me. I'm still here. <laughs> you know, I really didn't think I'd make it this far in my life. You know, I talked about killing myself so many doggone times, but it didn't happen. I'm still here and I'm very grateful that I am still here. I'd rather, you know, rather live. I, I really do. I'd rather just live my life to the fullest and I have four children and I'm not going nowhere. They are my life, and I'd rather it be that way. So, just remember, if you have a problem and you can't solve it, just let it, just leave it all to God. He'll provide. I promise you, He will. And um, I, I'm seriously hoping that you know my family and I do decide to move to Chicago. I'm gonna start right now taking steps into making that happen. I don't care how far I gotta go to make it happen. I will. Me and my family are four hours away from our future. Let me just say that. My, fa my husband and I have made the decision on moving to Chicago. That was going to be our dream home. And thank God he's from Chicago. Yes, my husband, native of Chicago, Illinois, so he knows majority of all of Chicago. So if I ever need help looking for something, I just run to him. I don't got to go to no map quest. You know, he pretty much will know everything it is. Um, I don't know if you can um, see behind me. I'm, I'm pretty sure you can. Um, back there is um, the train. And, you know, points, you know, not, I'm sorry, not points, but places that you can um, go in Chicago. And trust me, that map has so many places for you to go to in Chicago. It's ridiculous. Um, you probably see, not this one in the brown frame. That has nothing to do with Chicago. That's just something in front of our table. But um, you can clearly see in some places um, these pictures. They're actually from a calendar that I got from Chicago. Um, these are all pictures of Chicago, and if you see this, um, oh, actually, hang on. okay, here we go. If you see my finger going up and down right here, I drew that. That is um, train routes. Yes, everywhere in my house is train routes that I did myself. Yes, I did all this with crayons, markers, and to make the circles, I used a nickel to make the circles perfectly. Um, that's the... Um, Sorry, let me go. I'm sorry, I'm really bad with directions here. Um, this is the orange line. And um, if you can, okay. And where my finger's pointing at, that is the brown line. And I'm going to have to one day take my uh, laptop and just kind of carry it around so you all can see. But um, I have a purple line, the orange line over here. And down our hallway, well, right here by my um, washer and dryer, actually, that's the yellow line. Trust me, the yellow line is crap. You're not missing anything. And on the walls in the hallway, I have the blue line, the green line, and the red line. I think they made some changes to the red line. I have to look it up because I might have to draw that one again. But trust me, that is a lot of work. That's a lot of concentration. I kid you not. And um, actually, sorry. Sorry about that. Never had to do that, but you understand. And um, this is a keychain that I had um, got as a souvenir um, from Chicago. I don't use it. You can clearly see why it's still freaking brand spanking new because I have it hanging up. 
um, with some postcards that I've also got as souvenirs while we were out there. My husband had took me and the um, kids. Angel wasn't um, born yet, actually. She wasn't even thought of at the time. But um, it was me, my husband, my three children, and my two twin cousins, Dominique and Aurelia. I love you guys. Miss you. Hope to see you again. Um, we took them out there for their birthday, and they had a ball. I think we all had we all, not think we had a ball. It's just the funny part is when we were coming home, we all got quiet in the car. <laughs> Seriously, you can drop a dime in that car, you, you would hear it. We was just like depressed. <laughs> yeah, we went from happy to depressed when we were coming back to Michigan. Yeah, Chicago has that effect on us. I mean, you go out there to Chicago, I mean, you will not be disappointed. I kid you not. I've been out there so many times, I was never disappointed. I had so much fun. There are so much things that you can do out there. I mean, there's no such thing as staying in the house is, is what it is. It's beautiful. It's wonderful out there. I know that there's been a lot of things going on out there. There's been a lot of, you know, crime and, you know, gang-related, you know, murders and things of that nature. But we know where they're occurring at. So we're trying our hardest not, you know, we're trying our hardest to stay away from those areas. Um, Everywhere is not safe. You know, there's not one city, you know, that's safe. There's not one place that's safe, except for heaven. Heaven's the safest place, you know, you will ever be in. So that's the only place I can tell you that's safe right now. Um, there's danger everywhere. You know, it just all depends how you carry yourself and how you take precautions in that nature. But I know everyone says that there's bad things going on in Chicago. There's bad things going on everywhere. So it's not just that particular place. But... My family and I love Chicago. We're, we're always talking about it. So the fact that we're only four hours away from Chicago, I would rather just go out there. And all of our friends tell us the same thing. You know, what you're waiting for, you need to just go ahead and do the process and just go ahead and move out there. And they're telling the truth. But it's all about timing and it's all about making sure that you think right when you do that. You know, you don't want to rush into it. When you plan on doing something, you have to plan everything out. you got to know what the pros and cons are of doing this. You know, so we got to make sure we have a place. we got to make sure someone has a job. You know, that's the main two things that you need to have is, is basically what it boils down to. you got to make sure you have the funds for it. So that's why I said that we should just go ahead and move out there when we have tax return. The fact we have to file separately because, you know, you can only file three children and the fact we have four, so it's two and two now. So we have to file separately. we got no choice. But it's, I, I'm pretty sure it's better this way because we get more because you file separately. It's just when, I, when we file separately, I just feel like we're getting a divorce. We're not, but that's what it just feels like. I told my husband that. He just laughed. It's not the case. That's just the law. But, yeah, I definitely want to move to Chicago. He does, too. But like I said, you just got to make sure that you plan everything out right because if you do one fuck up, it's it's a wrap. And then you're going to be sitting there like, why I didn't think about this before I took that step? And we don't want that to happen. We want to be able to go to Chicago and literally say, we did it. No problems, no nothing. We did it. We took precautions. We looked into everything. Everything was legit. I got a job, or, or you know, he got a job, or I got a job. Um, we got a home. We found schools to put the kids in and whatnot. Um, we're near a train line. We're near a bus line. Should anything go down with our vehicles? You know, that's what I want to be able to hear from both of us when we go out there. I don't want us to tell me, like, we shouldn't came out here yet. We should have planned a little bit more. We don't want to be. We don't want to say that. We want to be able to say we accomplished something that we've been wanting to accomplish for the longest. This is a big one. I know I said me publishing a book is a big one, but then again, that would be the second big one. The big one for us, ladies and gentlemen, that we are trying to accomplish is to move to Chicago. And you know what? One of these days, that day is going to come. And when it does, we are going to have the biggest smile on our faces. We're going to be smiling from ear to ear. You will never get some smiles off our faces when we move to Chicago. Every time we take a picture and we post it on Facebook, you guys will be like, there is not a single picture that they posted on Facebook when they are not smiling. They are smiling their butts off. And you know why? Because they are somewhere where they've been wanting to be, where they wanted to go for the longest and they made it happen and now they're smiling. That's what you are going to see from us when we move to Chicago, finally. So I am doing okay, just to let you guys know, and until then, I hope to see you all again soon. Sorry you guys haven't seen me in a while.
But um, I've been doing okay. I've just been busy. And like I said, school is starting back up again. So I'm definitely going to be a busy bee for a minute. So I think my music is kind of um, messing up for me right now because I'm trying to um, put it up for you. So I guess I got to start it over or whatever. But um, yeah, we're going to move to Chicago. It's just a matter of time, so let's just pray that it does happen for us. You guys are going to have to pray for us for this to happen. But, um, but like I told you, if there's anything that you feel that you cannot do yourself and you don't have a solution to the problem, leave it in God's hands, people. Trust me, it works. God never fails. He provides a way. Hey, I was talking about I needed a Red Bull one day, and guess what? I turned to my left, and there was a refrigerator full of Red Bull. The moment I said I needed a Red Bull, God provided me with a Red Bull. <laughs> so, trust and believe, God got you back to the next wonder. So, till then, thank you for watching another episode of Share My World. I love you guys. I miss you. And I will see you guys soon. So, take care.